We are here with Mike Agna. He just placed uh, second at ARG Providence, runner-up, with uh, the Magis Vector Magician deck. Yes. So let's get this deck profile underway. Um, just got the two guys you can't not run. Um, uh, either side of scales, full scales, all that stuff. They're just too good. Um, the main pendulum engine was... The main scale engine was Magicians. So we ran... Three of these guys, the pit, uh, two of Wisdom Eye and Zanke. Um, it used to be uh, less, but the reason why you use three of these guys now is because Power Desires is a really good card. So that's the only reason that's at three now. Um, and then the cards that win you the game, the Magic Specters. Um, so from my last list, I reduced this by one because. I felt like three wasn't needed, but uh, yeah, it just ran smooth. Those guys. Anything special about Kieran? Um, he's German. <laughs> um, he speaks many languages and he bounces everything. Guten Tag. Uh, yeah. uh, three abductors. Uh, yeah, I don't need to explain them. So, oh, yeah. Uh, the Odd Eyes engine. Uh, I think this is the perfect number. Um, as long as I run this deck, I'm not going to change this. Uh, unless this becomes a pendulum dragon when I don't run Magic Specters, that's about it. Uh, you need to run four. And then one for a Phoenix Sentry. Yep. So you can, it's just, you need this or Pulse. Do you think one was the optimal amount? You, can, you shouldn't run two. Um, you just need, you need a card that pops a monster in the main deck. You really just need that be, one. It needs to be this or Pulse, and this is just better. Yeah. Because um, it has more first kills. Yeah, it, it can kill monsters too. So. Or monsters and spells. Uh, so that was it for the, uh, the monsters. Uh, On to the magic lineup. Yeah, spell, so whatever. spell whatever. I'm old school. We're not trying to get sued. Pendulum uh, calls. Uh, the nuts. Yeah, I mean, you gotta run it if you run magicians. Uh, one upstart goblin. Yeah. And now we get into the new stuff that I was running. The newer stuff. Um, this is the field spell engine. Uh, so before, I like 2 and 2, uh, this card fixes brick hands, so what you, if you open all magicians, your hands are really bad, if you draw this with it, uh, Oak Dragon becomes Unicorn, so this, I actually, I had a hand that was like 3 Dragon Pits, Pendulum Call, a Terraforming, and another random low spell, and it just blew a, a Burning Abyss Modern Player out. Just because you're what, an Oak Dragon. What exactly does that do? Just for people um, you can tribute a uh, Wind Spellcaster to special summon any Magic Specter monster from your deck. Or oh. any um, level 4 monster. So you grab a Raccoon and then tribute for Unicorn. Cool. Let's see what that does. Um, and then two of uh, the new best card. Yeah, the staple. The, yeah. Um, but not three. No, uh, if you draw two of it, it defeats the purpose of actually playing the card. So you, I don't think you should ever run three. Okay. Um, but as soon as you play one, like you just have so many more cards. Uh, like every game I activated, I won. So. Cool. That speaks for itself. That card is really that good. Um, yeah, because um, you can you play it before your pendulum summon, and then you have an extra card. And a lot of times your pendulum summon four. So now you can pendulum five, and just, if you have five and two traps, like it's just over. So the last cards in the deck are the traps. Now I didn't like this in the main deck; it's needed for the side deck, but it, it was it was good. Um, just one tempest in the main. Well, I mean, I, I might I might be a scrub. I'm if, if I uh, <laughs> if I knew I was playing against Bernie and Bishop Monarchs, you can search this card. Yeah. And then it becomes more alive than this. Ah um, yes. So that's the reasoning behind it, but I didn't like it. So it's going back to two tempers. Okay. That's uh, yeah, so that's the main deck. Uh, for the side deck, we had two Dango Seca because uh, we're going back now. Yeah, it's it's worse than you think. Um, it just doesn't stop any spell unless you're going first. So really, it what didn't do you as it didn't do much, much as like, you. It, I never really drew it. But it, just, yeah. it doesn't do what you want it to do. It just stop any spell. It stops strike. That's the only yeah. That's um, and then I ran Typhoons and Mystical Space Typhoons. Yeah. So that's how I added an any spell majority of the time. The time. So no, uh, no Twin Twisters? Your cards are too vital? Or I, sometimes you don't want to discard. 
Um, it may become Twin Twister later, but I don't know. The format's almost over, so yeah. we'll see. So it's those. Um, two Chaos Hunters. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. Chaos Hunter um, was meant to lock out Monarchs going second and Cosmo going second. Just Pendulum Summon it and lock him out. This can work for his Cosmo going first as well. Yeah. Um, so, How did it do for you? It was great. I mean, it didn't come out much rather than one Cosmo. And the Modern Premier didn't draw it, so it's still just a really good card. Cool. Um, and then for the Pendulum matchup specifically, I, I ran these guys on the side there. This allows you, like, if you want to go first, you can just bring in the Tempest and then have multiple counter traps, or you can just bring in these guys and go second with the Typhoons. And just screw them up. Pendulum really Storm, kind of like a. Uh, it's like poor man's, man's, poor, man's poor, poor man's wavering eyes. Yeah. It's not even close to wavering eyes. It was better because it increased your play. <laughs> yeah. It reduces their play. Fair so, enough. Um, so wavering eyes would be just the best card. Yeah, right. It still is the best card if you're ever playing Pendulum. Because it just gets you any card you want, and you just Pendulum back the guys you destroyed. So. Yeah. Um, so this card is. Extremely good in mirror matches out from the traps. You destroy the scales, destroy the trap, and then once they're out of traps, you just win the game. Yep. And a mini monarch field spell side. Um, basically just for monarchs. Like you don't care if you're doing this unless it's like the Pepe deck where you can target their guys. If they're running magic specs, it's just not worth it because it's a dead card. So it's just really for monarchs and Pepe. And then this is just going against monarchs and uh Sometimes Cosmo going second. Yeah. yeah. So that's the main side. It's pretty interesting side. Yes, I mean, for the extra, it's just a bunch of cards that yeah, I didn't use. Yeah, I can, like, yeah. these so, guys. Yeah, I was going to say, just show us what you made the most. Uh, yeah, like these. Oh, yeah, Chidori is utilizing this deck, which is quite so, cool. So is Totem. Like, these cards did, just uh, never come up. They never came up. I was going to say, did Chidori and Totem come up a lot? Or? No, I mean, I, I, bring, I did summon Totem, but it didn't do anything. Like, these guys, I just never made, never thought about making it. So these can be of whatever you want, basically. Yeah. They don't really Interchangeable. Really yeah, so you got a rank 4 engine here. Uh, these two, this is great um, against Monarchs, great against just removal, and then this is the guy in the forest. Yeah. And you play the um, Utopia Prime. Is his a, is Utopia Prime have a reason other than being an extra... No, you want to be able to attack twice. Okay. That's it. Um, sometimes the effect comes up and it's cute, but normally you don't use it. Yeah. Norito comes up a little bit more than you think now. If you go, if you get into Vortex, you just make Norito, and then they have to have three of one side of the scale to win, which is hard. If, if you uh, if you just take out the high scale, so yeah, it was good. And then Beyond is the other level six. Uh, that's the card in the extra deck that lets you win the game. Yeah, I was gonna say when I play the deck, I love Beyond. Yeah, he just he just steals games. You just play until you can do this sometimes, and then you just beat them like that. A lot of people leave their fields and you know big yeah. monsters. Yeah, just never leave your guys in attack mode, and he does nothing. So, but people leave him in attack mode, so you win. So he's done. And then uh, a few ring sevens that are actually useful. Um, this is just for him and the Cosmo matchup. And then these two. This can seal out games against certain decks. Like against Monarchs, if you get him to under 15, this can normally win the game for you. Um, this guy is just really good against Monarchs as well. Um, just being able to do stuff. And then one Vortex for the Absolute. Tell us how you're Swiss Knife at the moment. For day one. Round one, I played Magic Spectre. Round two and three, I played him. Two Monarch variants. Um, round four, I played Burning Abyss. Round five, I played another Monarch, uh, Dominion Monarch. And then six, I played Cosmo. Seven, I played Burning Abyss. And then eight, I played Burning Abyss Monarchs. You said um, to me earlier today that uh, this was, there, no wins were free, essentially. Like, you, you were essentially yeah, the, um, the entire time. The, uh, the ARG has a better quality of player because you have to pay more money to enter. So you're going to get all these guys that think they're the best. And normally they're decent. You're not going to be some kid that doesn't know what they're doing. So it's just people are, are just a better quality of player and they pay more money. So it comes down to. Did you get a trophy? No, I got I got a fancy ring that's wow. worth two dollars maybe. Oh, wow. well, that's kind of cool though. Wearing it? No, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> 
Uh, what would you be your um, MVP card? Um, if you have to ask, you shouldn't run the deck. <laughs> Are you sure? I had it's to. Yeah, it's always going to be this guy. It's not going to be Pot of Desire. It's not going to be Pendulum Call. It's always Karen. No. If you don't have Karen, you lose Here, the game. Here's a better question. What do you think is the least valuable card you played in the weekend? Least valuable card I played. Um, that's a good question. I think it has to be Toad, to be honest. Toad? A lot of times it's just there for when you open really broken. <laughs> Um, but other than that, it just kind of sits there as a five scale, which doesn't really good. So, Toad, if, there, if there's anybody to cut, it would be him. So, to replace with something else. There's, there's nothing else yeah. better than Toad, I don't think. So, like, if a new card comes out that's fantastic, great. Toad has a good place to go to. But opening up two traps is pretty cool versus uh, Pendulum Dex. You just do two counter traps and, like, they just lose most of the time. So, yeah, fair. Yeah. If, right, thank you very much. Hold on, one more, real quick one. If the deck manages to claw and scratch its way through the next ban list, I would never change his deck. Ever. You would never change his deck. You're still playing through and through. I love this deck, and uh, there may be cards that come out like new Odd Ice cards or something. But other than that, the deck would remain relatively the same. Right. Do you have any final words before we uh, take it home? I think that about sums it up. All right. Well, so congratulations, yeah. Mike Agnes, second place at ARG Providence. Uh, thank you very much. Keep dueling, America.